a marketing agency in Austin called True Marketing. We specifically work with companies who are targeting technical audiences. And we've done a lot of research around how engine, what are their preferences around content, around search, and their buying process. So if you get a book and flip through it, you're going to see a lot of charts uh, and a lot of graphs. All of the data that we have up until this point has been in North America. I'm very excited that partnering with Elector, we have our first research report for engineers in Europe. So I'm going to show uh, uh, some highlights of that data uh, in this. All right, so let's dive in. So when I'm talking to audiences about marketing to engineers, I like to start out by getting us all in the mindset of thinking about this target audience, a very unique audience um, that, re that requires a very thoughtful approach to marketing. So how does, how does an engineer approach that buying process when they're looking for information to solve the critical applications that they're working in? They're looking for information from all of you, from all of your companies. They need that information in order to do their job better, faster, cheaper, and solve very critical applications. Well, they're looking for research, they're looking for data. They come at it with a very skeptical approach. Any engineer in the room, tell me if you disagree with anything I say. I'm happy to, 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 to hear that feedback. Um, and they come at it very logically. And I love this example of illustrating that logical approach. So where the optimist says the glass is half full, the pessimist says the glass is half empty, the engineer says, well, duh, the glass is twice as big as it needs to be. That's a very logical approach to thinking. And so we have to be very thoughtful in our marketing about how we uh, approach and target and engage uh, this audience to get them into our buyer funnel and, and nurture and, and ultimately convert them into opportunities and customers. So I'm going to go through this pretty fast. So hang on. Uh, all the information, again, is in detail in my book here. It's for sale in the, in the, in the booth today. Um, so I'm going to go through pretty fast, and then I'm, I'm going to be here after if you guys have uh, questions and want me to explain uh, more slowly. Okay, so top 10. I'm going to talk about what I mean by embrace the magnet, your number one most important investment, your website. Um, write it and they will come. It's all about content today in marketing and giving to get. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Saying thank you. Uh, your parents you know, taught you manners and who knew it could be a competitive advantage. We're going to talk about that, matching your marketing to the engineer's buyer journey um, and how much of that buying process is online, remembering that our number one customer is sales and marketing. I get some debate from marketing people about that, um, and so I'm happy to have that debate. Your next marketing hire uh, might actually be software and not a person, and I'm going to talk a little bit about marketing automation, and, ultim and, and finally... Marketing is changing so fast. And then you add on that we have this really challenging uh, target audience of engineers that we're, that we're, in, that we're engaging. So uh, there's lots of, lots of ways to keep up, and I'm going to offer a few ways to do that here. All right. So let's dive in. Let's talk first about what I mean by embracing the magnet. When I want to start, this is the first of many charts I'm going to throw at you in this short little 10 or 15 minutes. And this is the first of, this is a preliminary, this is preliminary data of our first Smart Marketing for Engineers research study in Europe. And one of the first questions we asked on the survey is, what are the most valued sources of content that you use to find that information that you need to do your job? Number one and number two, uh, as you can see, is search engines, and that's primarily Google, and uh, supplier and vendor websites. And the other thing I'm going to show you through this, and here's the, the next one, is how does this compare to what we see in the research that we've done so far over the last number of years in North America? And you can see it's almost identical. The top number one and number two sources, search engines and supplier and vendor websites. Now, something else that we're going to have in our final research report, this is early data. Uh, so there's another tease for you engineers out there to go here and, and complete the survey. Our end sample is pretty small right now. You can see I have it broken out by country, and I only have about 30 people from Germany and Austria. So big push for, for engineers there to complete the survey also in the UK. So this is early data. My, my end sample is not big enough yet to call it an actual trend. 
But interestingly, of all the research we've done in North America and when we, when we look at it by region, Germany and Austria are the one region that contradict the trend uh, that we see in every other region. And that is that the number one source they go to is technical trade publication websites like Elector, a great example. Um, and then they go to supplier vendor websites and then the third most valued is search engines. So really interesting data and we're looking for more engineers to complete this so we can actually really feel confident that this is, uh, that this is a finding that we can believe in. All right, so with all of that data then around the most valued content sources, what do I mean by the magnet? What I mean is that there is a real shift happening in marketing. It's, it's already happened in the US uh, it's very much happening now here, and that is the shift from what we, what we call outbound or push marketing. It's symbolized by the megaphone. I'm, we're, we're in a traditional outbound marketing environment right now, and what do I have in my hand? I have a microphone. So this is a great example of traditional marketing, going to a trade show uh, and, and doing your marketing this way. That's really shifting to what we call inbound content marketing. Sometimes people uh, refer to it or interchange those. And it's the idea of pulling your visitors in, symbolized by the magnet. You're earning that visit from the most valued content source, search engines, through your content to your website. Um, so that's what it means uh, about the magnet. So embracing the magnet means, as marketers and business leaders now today, our challenge and opportunity is to get found. We have to get found by our target audiences out there. So embrace the magnet, move toward inbound marketing in your bias uh, of, of your effort. All right, so then not surprising, seeing the data around the uh, most value content source, the number one most important investment you can make in your marketing is your website. But let's take that just a step further. So we ask this question, what impact does a company's website have on your perception of that company as a technically competent, credible supplier? And here you see um, this green is, is the majority of engineers answered some impact. And then this purple over here, 21% considerable impact. So 71% of engineers uh, uh, that responded to the survey are saying it has some or considerable impact. Now, for people in Europe, uh, know that this is, what it, this is where we are in North America. Almost three times more considerable impact uh, than what we see in Europe. So this is, where, this is where it's going in Europe. So heads up, your website is going to have a greater and greater and greater impact on the perception that you're creating uh, for your target audience. Now, what, um, oh yeah, I had that build. Now, what's interesting too, again, some early data. The other way that we analyzed this research report was by age group. So I wanted to show this too. So I think I have a build on this. So interesting then, when you look at the youngest age group, that's the age group that said they had the, consi the most considerable impact, uh, the website in, in their perception of the company. So younger engineers, uh, are saying that it has even more impact. So again, this trend is, is growing, uh, and so your number one investment in marketing is your website. All right, so write it, and they will come. This is all about content. Remember, your number one challenge today is to get found. So we ask the question, agree or disagree uh, that, I forget the question, uh, you're more likely to do business with a company that regularly produces new and current content. Look at that, that's 87% of engineers said they agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. So if you start to connect the dots here, the number one source, the, the, the one of the top two sources, most valued sources is supplier vendor websites, and they're looking for information to help solve their critical applications. They want to come to you guys in your, your suppliers and your vendors they're looking for you and they're more willing to do business with you if you're educating. They wanna to come to your website and they wanna learn. Um, so this is huge. Here's a follow on to that. When we asked, rank your level of trust in the type of content written, you see the most trusted uh, author type of content is an engineering expert at a vendor company. 
So all of you subject matter experts out there, get ready because marketing is going to be calling you because we need your help in this new magnet inbound marketing approach. All right, so it gets better. Um, I love this one. Uh, and if anyone wants to hear the story offline, I'll tell you what gave me the inspiration to ask this question. Uh, but the question is, it has to do with the CEO of National Instruments, who I, I worked with for many years. So the question is, how many pages deep in search will you go before you find what you're looking for or you start your search over, okay? Um, and so what we see here is one page is the blue and then two pages, three, four, and it goes the very end on the orange is more than 10 pages. So you can see this is a breakout of how far engineers said they would go. But I'm not going to stop there. Let me, let me really contrast this for you. So a company called Chatika Insights did research and found that 92% of all traffic on Google happens on page one. So if I, if I compare these charts, here's the, here's the majority of the human population, and here's engineers. That's how many engineers said they would stop on page one. In fact, 2% more said they would go more than 10 pages deep than would stop on page one. So the good news here for suppliers and vendors is that if you commit to content, engineers are seeking that information that they can trust. And so they're going to find it. They are going to be relentless in their search. Um, so just to round this out, I don't know if you guys all realize this, but I just did something really groundbreaking. I just proved that engineers are different than the rest of the complete human population <laughs> in one single chart, or in a few charts, I guess. Um, okay, so then uh, this last one, again, this is early data. Uh, by region, we have some really, um, uh, really, really relentless engineers, uh, searchers in Belgium and Germany and Austria. You see that there's not one engineer in those regions that said they stop on page one. And in fact, it's the highest of all the research we've done. Those are the regions that engineers said they would go, the most said they would go more than 10 pages, and you see it in France as well. So again, early data, but really interesting about, uh, about their search behaviors. Uh, all right, so give to get, what do I mean by that? Well, if you're gonna have these engineers coming to your website and you're offering them content, well, you want to get their name, right? You want to be able to build your database and you want to be able to market to them over time. Well, we got to be able to uh, get something in return for all the investment we make in that great high value content. And so we asked this question, when you get to a lead form on a company's website, what fields are you most willing to complete? And this is the percentages all the way down from work email all the way down to the bottom. Um, and so this is really good news. Engineers are willing to give information to get your high value content. But what you have to really keep in mind as you're creating your landing pages and building your lead forms is you can't put all these fields on the lead form or you're going to get a really high abandon rate. And so to avoid abandons, keep in mind this concept of the fair exchange of information. If you just ask for work email, in theory, you're going to get a 79% conversion rate to all visits on that page. Uh, the more you ask, the more uh, of an abandon rate you're going to get. So this is where automation comes in because you can use a feature most automation packages have what's called progressive profiling. You can ask a couple of fields on the first visit and then when they come back, you have those pre-populated and you ask another and you ask another and you just learn more and more about them each time they come uh, back to visit. Now again, another prediction for what I see coming in Europe is what we already see in the US. Look how much engineers in the US are more willing to complete fields, that's the long blue bars, than uh, their peers in Europe. So know that this is good news. More and more engineers are going to be used to filling out these lead forms, and you guys are going to get a real ROI on your investments in content and inbound marketing in that, in that magnet approach. All right, so let's talk about manners for just a minute. Our parents all taught us to say thank you, and it turns out it's a competitive advantage um, in marketing. And so we asked the question, when you complete a lead form, 
How likely are you to do business with a company that takes the time to say thank you and offers additional resources? And while the majority of engineers didn't have an opinion either way, interestingly, about 45% said they were, they, were more li they were likely or much more likely to do business with that company. So saying thank you can, can truly be a competitive advantage, offering um, more resources. So that's, that's this group right here um, that's, more, that's willing or more, much more willing to do business uh, with that company. All right, I know I'm going fast, hang in with me, and I'll be happy to explain other things uh, when we get through. Match your marketing to the engineers buying. So if engineers are going more and more to websites and they're looking for content, how is that impacting the buying process? Well, thanks to Google, over the last number of years, the environment of sales and marketing has completely transformed. And we're no longer in control as marketers and business leaders, and instead, the buyer is now completely in control. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that the majority of the buying process is now moving online. So this shows you, um, you see about 30% of engineers, I think I have this built, about 30% of engineers said that about half of the buying process is now happening online. And even more, about 50%, hang in with, with all these percentages, about half of the engineers that we surveyed answered that 60% or more of their buying process is happening online. So again, our challenge and our opportunity is to get found, and that's through high value content that all of our subject matter experts partner up with us to help create. So a question for marketers to think about and business leaders who own the marketing budgets is, is at least 60% of your marketing effort being biased toward the magnet or toward the megaphone? And be thinking about that, because in particular in Europe, you guys have a unique opportunity to get ahead. In the US, it is ridiculously competitive with content marketing now. It's really, really hard. Um, but you guys have a real opportunity here because it's still coming. All right, next, marketing. Our number one customer is sales. So I already talked about the buying process moving more and more online. Well, what does that look like? Well, it looks like this. Uh, engineers say that they much prefer to uh, research multiple vendors' websites, uh, do their research online before they talk to sales. So they're wanting to talk to sales much later in the buying process. And we also ask the question, well, how many interactions do you like to have or prefer to have with a company before you actually talk to sales, or visiting them at a trade show, uh, visiting their website? It's three to four interactions. Now again, foresight for Europe, in the US, it's five to seven. And not surprising, in correlation to that, m more of the buying process is happening online in the US than what we see uh, here in Europe. So if you're on a marketing team, you need to be thinking about sales. More and more of, of the activity that we bring to sales has got to come from marketing. And you need to have tools like the ones I'm showing here, where you're, you're creating ownership along the funnel and you're, you're, uh, you're measuring conversions and you're understanding from the bottom back up to the top what does marketing need to bring to sales? And you're having a, what we call a service level agreement between marketing and sales and holding each other accountable. So this is really, really important. I talk a lot about this uh, in one of the last chapters of my book. Okay, couple of last ones here. Treat your content like a product. Is it enough to just write a white paper, put it on LinkedIn, have a couple of employees, you know, put it on their LinkedIn, you know, write a blog about it, and then and then just, you know, hope that they come, it's not gonna work. And so what I like to say, a lot of engineers, you, right, you guys understand what it takes to market a product. You do all this investment in R&D and you take your product to market and you have all these marketing plans and all these things, you're gonna go visit the press and you put all this effort into it because you wanna get an engineering return on investment. Well, you need to think that way about your content too. You need to market your content, thus the term content marketing. So how do you do that? Well, optimize, amplify, repurpose, repeat. The whole middle section of my book is all about this. So just really quick on keyword selection, 
strongly recommend that you consider a long tail approach with multiple words. What's that, what that's going to mean is that you're going to get much lower search volume on those terms. You're going to get lower competition uh, and you're going to get the right people uh, who you want to come to your website. So think about long tail and then think about repurposing. So uh, think about writing once a really high value premium piece of content like a white paper and think about all the ways that you can repurpose and then amplify all those repurposed formats uh, of, that same, of that same white paper. So maybe a white paper requires you know, 20, 25 hours of work with five or seven hours from your subject matter expert. Well, how can you take that investment of all that time and go turn it into 100 more hours of investment just by repurposing and changing that one piece into, into five or, or, or more other kinds of pieces. All right, so next, uh, number nine, your next, market, your next marketing hire might not be a person, it might be software. So marketing automation software is a huge efficiency gain for marketing teams. Um, now, I talked about the importance of manners earlier and saying thank you. I want to come back to that. We did a follow-on question to that. And we said, okay, so you, wanna, you, wanna, you, know, you want your companies that you're doing business with to have good manners. You want them to say thank you. How quickly do you want to hear from them? And here's what we see. Um, nearly 70% say they want that thank you and they want it within 48 hours. Some want it within 24. Again, foresight for what's coming in Europe, in the U.S., they mostly want it within 24 hours, they expect it. So you guys need to be thinking about this. Well, as your lead volume grows, how can you possibly keep up with emailing every lead that you convert on your website? That is a great example among so many of what marketing automation can do for you. So all these, this is all along the funnel, all the different ways that marketing automation uh, can help you from lead forms and landing pages to being your whole back end on your CMS making it very, very easy where you don't have to hire a developer anymore. Uh, you can do it yourself. You don't have to have those, uh, those very specific programming skills. And you get really nice dashboards like this one uh, and even down to uh, specific areas of your website and how they're performing. All right, last but not least, uh, number 10. So this is just a very small sample of how much marketing is changing uh, and it continues to change really fast. So together with Elector True Marketing, we have three ways uh, for you to stay abreast and keep learning uh, about all of this. The first is to get the research report. It's filled with data like what I just showed you. We'll be doing a live webinar uh, and, and really making that information available and, and certainly blogging about it on, on both of our blogs. The second is um, there's some flyers here that, uh, that you can grab. We're gonna be doing a hands-on workshop through Germany and, and one city in the Netherlands in June. It's a day and a half, I'm personally leading them, and you will leave that workshop with a draft inbound marketing plan and content plan. You can do it at the company level, think about a new product you're coming out with, bring your product manager, uh, bring your writer, bring a couple people from your team, and use this as an opportunity to get really focused about developing that product launch or that marketing plan for your company. So that's the workshop. Uh, more information on the flyer here, and any of us are happy to, to answer questions. Uh, and then the last is to buy the book. It's all in here. Uh, and, um, and not the European data, you have to get the report to get that. I published my book before the European data came out. Um, but check out the book. Uh, the Elector team is selling it here today. I'm happy to stay around as long as I need to uh, to sign copies. So thank you all very, very much. I know I was quick and fast, or uh, fast and full of information, but hopefully that gave you a taste of it. Uh, and, uh, and thank you all very much. Get another beer, get a glass of wine. Uh, and thank you for being here. Okay, thank you, uh, Rebecca, for another lively and torrent-like presentation, if I may say so. Um, the book is here. The smart scope is for everybody to win if you participate on the survey. Again, help us, and we'll help you complete the data. You badly need more data from Germany and from the UK. Rebecca, correct, eh? So, Please help us and get the data complete and we'll have a more useful 
survey results. Thank you very much, all everybody, for attending and listening. And uh, come join Rebecca for more discussions. Thank you very much. You're welcome.